We are recording and I'll, um, I've got documents open uh, and I'll do my best to bring them up as we discuss them. Okay, great. So these are from our meet from our short shorter meeting last week. So we should be able to get through those pretty quickly. Sorry, I'm going to let's see. Do you see the minutes now? Or are you still on the agenda? I uh, still see the agenda. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna stop sharing. My computer is starting to do a really weird freaky thing too. You good now? Yes. I'll make a motion to accept these minutes. I think I'll second it. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to go through uh, roof. Yes. Gregor. Yes. Selman. I would, I'm going to approve them because I think I have to. For, um or I don't know uh for let's quorum? See, one, two, three, four. No, I think we're good. Then I'll abstain. Okay. Dumont? Yes. Drucker? Yes. Durr? Yes. Ravi Kumar? Yes. All righty. Minutes are approved. What was the cap there, um, Stephanie? Uh that's okay, I got it, Steve. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> I got that. <clears throat> okay, great. So I know there's some members of the public here. Um, I think to speak specifically to agenda item number five, but if anybody wants to make a more general public comment. I see Felicia raising her hand. I, I'm just wondering, like, I do we if we want to make a comment, do we have to talk about it now um, and then just listen when it comes up, or do we can we wait until that time and answer questions or talk about it? I'm unclear. I'm, I'm comfortable with you all uh, talking openly about it when we get to that agenda item. If nobody else has any issues with that. I think when we get to that agenda item, I can just let them in to the discussion so that you can see them as well. Yeah, that'd be great. So yeah, Felicia, if you have anything unrelated to the electrification that you'd like to raise, feel free now. Otherwise, we'll mm -hmm. um, bring you, we'll uh, have that discussion and more open discussion in a bit. I just want to thank you for all your work. Thank you. It's a great committee. Okay, with that, I think we can move Stephanie to any staff updates. Sure, just really quick, I wanted to let you all know that um, the Ethics Commission has sent out their annual training 
uh, where you have to watch the videos and go through the, the sort of questionnaire quiz and then sign a certification that you um, participated in the training. So I will be forwarding that to you all tomorrow. Um, but you'll have, I think there's, there's a cover letter message that will tell you when the um, submission is due. So, but you all need to do that as committee members of the town. So. Do you happen to know, I, I think this is a common um, training that everybody in public service gets, so. Yeah, and if you've already done it, you don't necessarily have to do it again. So for those of you who have done it through your current position, um, it, it's, you don't have to do it a second time. Because okay. it's on file. Yeah, okay. the state has it on file. So do we need to do it annually? Did you say that? Like yes, it it's year? supposed to happen annually, um, I believe, or biannually. I, I think it says in the letter. I, I actually it used to be annual. I don't think it is now, but it says so in the cover letter. I yeah. So uh, you'll get that tomorrow. Okay, great. Anything else, Stephanie? Uh, no, that's it for today. Okay, great. Um, so we'll move on to ECAC member updates. I have one update to share, which is related to the packet item titled 2021-0104 CRC request to town committees. It's a pretty dense document. So my suggestion would be that um, I just mention it today and we put it on it as a more official agenda item for a future meeting. Um, but the gist of it is, is that the CRC is looking for comments on their draft comprehensive housing policy. So this document includes a summary of um, well, to back up one more step, they they invited a couple chairs to a meeting to ask us how we felt, what, what we thought the best approach would be to collecting feedback. Um, and so we had asked them to send us a note that explained what kind of feedback they were looking for, a little bit of history about why they were doing what they were doing, and then the policy. So that's what this document provides. So there's a bit of history, then there's some summary of what we talked about in our meeting and then what they were, want in terms of feedback. They don't give a specific due date, but they do state that um, they're hoping to submit a recommendation to the council, ideally by June 30th, but no later than October 30th. Um, we're also welcome to provide more than one round of comments. So this is a, this is a draft that was circulated last week um, I think we'll get an updated version of the draft at some point. So um, I'd like to suggest that we all try to take a look at this before the next meeting. And maybe we can talk a little bit more about how we might wanna comment. Um, and if there's anybody that looks at this and feels particularly passionate about it and wants to sort of lead up the commenting from ECAC's perspective, um, that's something we could discuss next time as well. Happy to have somebody sort of take the lead in collating the comment or making comments that we can all review and, that, or, and collating those. So um, I think that's all for today, but I'll add that to a future agenda unless there's any comment questions. Yeah, Darcy. Oh, I think you're muted. I was trying to call Andrew, so I muted myself. Um, but um, I will send everybody a clarification that Mandy Jo Haneke, who's the chair, sent out yesterday to a member of the public who was commenting on it, and she went into very, a very lengthy description of what the process is going to be next, over the next six months, so I can pass that on to everybody. Um, Plus, just to repeat my comment from the last time, um, there is actually no reason why we're not also commenting on the zoning and planning. It, it kind of parallel to the, they, they're doing both the housing plan 
and the zoning and planning pieces simultaneously. So it seems like they should be getting input from the same groups on those two things. But anyway, I said that before. Okay, we can, I mean, we could certainly ask if about that. Yeah. Um, and I, I just have one brief member update. And that is that in the packet was the information about the biomass resolution that the League of Women Voters wants to put forward and they'd like to bring it to ECAC first to get an endorsement. Um, so they weren't prepared with an actual resolution for this meeting, but there were some, I think there were some things in the packet, right, about it? I th I'm trying to, I think I sent it out to everyone as a follow-up item. Yeah. So, so yeah. that there, the, I, I didn't know what to tell them as to whether, where, when we would be able to get it on our agenda, but I suggest, I just told them we're, we're having another meeting in two weeks and that's a possibility or they could, they can send us their resolution when it's done. They weren't clear that they needed to write the resolution themselves. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we can, if they want to submit submit a resolution, we can put it on the agenda for, for next time. Right, if we think that is the case, I can just let them know that. Yeah. <clears throat> Does anybody have any thoughts or anything to add to that? Just when the time comes, I would have a fair amount to say about biomass um, and, and, and sort of the history of it, as well as, um, I mean, just reading through the resolution, I think there's some merit there, but there's also some, there's a lot of um, mischaracterization and, and lack of clarity and specificity that's needed when you talk about wood energy, um, which I would um, bring forward when we discuss it. Jesse's got his hand up. Oh yeah, Jesse. Oh, just a, another update if, if that issue is closed. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's too late, but there's a opening on the historic commission. Um, and so I just, if people know um, possible climate allies that think it's a great place to have a voice, you know, their, their commission that can say, no, you can't have a heat pump in your front yard kind of thing. So I think there's there's a lot of interesting uh, overlap there. So I maybe spread the word. And then for what it's worth, our firm is currently working with Northampton to do some net zero energy planning um, on a, a number of large town owned or city owned masonry buildings. Um, you know, Keep you posted if anything interesting comes out of that. Um, Jesse, that's going to do with the resilience project, right? Uh, the resilience hub in Northampton. I'm not sure. It's a good question. I think Just, it's. I, I'm pretty sure it is, but. Or at least one is. There she is. I'm sorry, I'm late. Busy getting people to call Governor Baker. We're assuming that's what you were doing. <laughs> Hi, Jesse. Good to see you. Thanks, Jesse. Um, just to, to close out the biomass discussion, um, Darcy, I think if um, we do have next, I, I think um, it'd be helpful to understand the timing of when the resolution needs to be done by to influence any decision-making. Um, 
if it's a longer time frame, then maybe we we hold off for another week because next week is coming to give us the update. Um, so just also flagging that. An update on that, the timing. Okay. The, the timing on the biomass got extended. Um, so we have at least uh, a couple weeks. Okay. Um, so I think it'd be good if we could get the resolution in the packet next week to even have a, a quick discussion on it if we have time, but uh, unless we need to discuss it next week, next time, sorry. Um, but just noting that, you know, if we feel like we're gonna need to have a longer discussion on it, we may need to stretch it out over two meetings. You've got, so, so far you've got the CRC discussion for next time or review for next time as well as biomass. You could maybe do biomass and put the CRC one off a meeting yeah. or two. Yeah. So when we say the following meeting, just I'm just trying to keep track of them too. Okay. So for the so that would be the October meeting for the CRC Not discussion. <laughs> I mean I'm sorry, February. <laughs> sorry. Okay. I'm not ready for that yet. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I yeah, got stuck in October. That sounds good. Yeah, CRC is not a huge rush, so we can we can push that back if the biomass is ready. But okay, I'm just going to put first February meeting. Okay. Any other ECAC member updates? Do you want to hear the latest on the governor signing the bill? Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, our new Speaker of the House, Ron Mariano, has um, threatened that they're just going to refile it instantly and push it through and have a veto-proof majority. Um, so he has really no reason to veto it, um, except if he wants to show whatever the people whispering in his ear are saying to him um, uh, about not supporting it um, and, and giving them some, I don't know, showing them that they do have political capital. Um, but it would be really bad if he didn't sign it, if he vetoed or pocket vetoed. So we really want him to sign and play nice and sandbox and say, yeah, we're all in this together. Um, we're going to work together. So Is today the deadline. Um, tomorrow, Mariano said that he would refile tomorrow if the um, governor doesn't sign. Wow, that's great. Great. Okay. Um, well, at some point we will add on the agenda to debrief on that bill <laughs> once it's signed. Um, okay, so I think if we're all good, we can move on to the electrification resolution discussion. Okay, I'm gonna let um, Chris in as well. Yeah, so just to re re refresh everyone's memory, um, this was, we had a version of the resolution in our packet, I believe in our last meeting of December. Um, we talked about it briefly, but we, uh, I think all agreed it'd be great to have Felicia and Chris here to explain it a bit more. Um, and so that's what we're doing today. Chris, I believe you were gonna start speaking. I can if you don't want to, but. What do you do? Oh, Chris, you might be talking and you might be muted. There we go. Oh, we still can't hear you. I can't see everybody. Let me make sure that he's not. Um... He's on and unmuted and I can see his mouth moving, but I don't know if his headphones yeah. maybe are an issue or.
Try unplugging the headphones and then plugging them back in. Oh, I heard something. Oh, Chris, we can hear you if you don't have it plugged in. Yeah, it's a bit erratic, but that's why I use the headphones. Okay, there we go. My question is, did you receive our cover letter that went with it? That yes. Do you want me to put that up too? Um, I, I don't know. What do you think, uh, Felicity? Felicia? <laughs> um, no, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I think we can talk about it. Um, yeah. The cover letter was in their packet. It, highlight. it just has some highlights about what the resolution had. If we can maybe say three of the highlights and um, and that how we incorporated some of the changes that were talked about at the last meeting. Talked about at the last meeting. Okay. Well, why don't you go ahead, Felicia? Okay. Um, so anyway, this um, this is a. Um, uh, resolution that's um, being presented at many towns um, around the around Mass in Massachusetts um, from who are part of the building electrification acceleration network and basically we're looking at finding a way since it seems illegal to say um, because of the building code um, to stop gas from um, being uh, to stop gas from being put into buildings. So we had to find some other ways around it. So this resolution is a way to find, to make, to have a home rule petition that individual towns can make choices about how they want to reach electrification and decarbonization. So one of the ways is to say, we can choose not to have gas come in um, into, into new buildings. Another way is to say, we want to make sure that costs don't go up for low income people as we go around uh, about this, um, this initiative. And we wanna have money made available, incentives made available to them so they can take part of electrification. Another one is that, um, oh, um, I'd have to look at it, but, but, but it's, it's a way to, um, yeah. Um, to find to find ways to to make buildings electric, basically, and new buildings, um, and so that's the resolution. And I think what I, I'd have to do is look at my own. <laughs> I'm take a look at my own really quickly. Um, oh, it's asking also the BBRS to um, to come to better. Um, rules with state level actions and more rapid um, decarbonization. It's asking, um, right, that's the fossil fuel infrastructure, um, to listen to what the to Office of the Attorney General said about, the, about becoming um, less reliant on gas and more on renewables. It's asking, um, yeah. Those kinds of things. All right. So the question is: Last time, it sounds like when you met, there were some questions like we can't talk about for, in terms of economic justice, like what the rates will be for people um, who are or lower income. But we could talk about cost, not wanting to increase their costs. We changed that. Um, and is there anything like the question is: Is this now acceptable? Is this resolution? This this. Um, be resolved, or they now seem to fit more with what is logical, possible for us to stand by as Amherst, so that we can present it to the town council, that you can present it to the town council like at the Energy and Climate Action Committee. We'd like very much if the ECAC uh, sent it over to the council recommending its adoption, the idea. But let's see, uh, there was also, I believe, Jesse, I think, are you hearing me now, by the way? Yes. Yes. Um, you suggested a clause that we did put in here, which was about uh, to make sure that we, that we committed to not overriding uh, the building code, uh, the building code's basic um, statutory function. So we've got, a, there's a clause in there. Let's see, which one is it? Might be further down. <clears throat> This is the bottom. 
maybe further up. <laughs> I saw it. Looks great. Basically, what the what happened to this was started by Bur by Brookline. Brookline um, well, wanted to prohibit new gas connections in new buildings. Um, and it was passed uh, voluminously by in the town in the town meeting. Um, and when it went to the attorney general, she wrote back saying, "We'd love it. We'd love to be able to do this, but it, it overrides the preemption of the building code. Or uh, the towns and cities may not have their own building code." And so this is a, a request that we find some wiggle room on that in that position and be allowed to make uh, more rigorous energy decisions. This isn't just uh, gas, although that's one, there's one clause about that. But it basically is to give towns and cities the right in, uh, to uh, be perhaps more rigorous than the building code. Darcy, did you have a question or comment? Yeah, I just, um, so this is all just asking um, the state legislature or the DPU uh, to do things, although it's asking Amherst um, to commit to things too. Um, I guess my where I see the the possible, I'm you know I'm in support of this, obviously, but um, I where I see the pushback is in residents and restaurants that use propane um, for, for cooking and he heating. And so how does, how does it affect that? Hmm. Because obviously we already, we don't, we already can't use, I mean, we don't, we already have a moratorium. So right. that, that helps tremendously <laughs> as far as this thing passed. But um, you know, the, the way people have gotten around that here is by using propane, um, especially restaurants. Well, so one significant important answer is that we're not prohibiting natural gas connections. What the, the, the purpose of the resolution is to give the towns and cities the op option of doing that kind of thing, but it doesn't do that kind of thing. If the towns and cities don't have don't have, can can exercise, can promulgate regulations as they wish. It gives the town the um, the it gives towns and cities the flexibility to issue uh, re regulations that uh, could be thought of as uh, um, otherwise preempted by the building code. But it, it isn't specific about those things. I don't believe. I think it just um, it allowing the uh, it's giving uh, giving the towns and cities that wiggle room. I think it is specific about not allowing it can, the cities can stop gas distribution through pipelines. I don't think it actually addresses people getting their own propane. So it doesn't, um, doesn't prohibit that. It allows towns and cities to, to um, change the gas code. I'm sorry, no, but it allows, right. gas sorry, right. it allows change the gas code to get gas permits but that's for gas pipe coming in, right? No, that's, that's going to be natural gas. Right. I don't like that term, natural gas, but. Uh, um, so whatever we do, the uh, municipalities would have the ability to, to shape it the way they want to. Mm -hmm. So they could prohibit natural gas and allow propane if they wanted to. What it says, what we're, it says here, here's the wording. It, uh, we call upon the Massachusetts state legislator to pass a law enabling municipalities to prohibit fossil fuel infrastructure in new construction and phase out fossil fuel in construction, infrastructure in existing buildings. Well, that gives you, gives towns and cities that ability to do that. Otherwise, that might. Uh, override uh, the building code or the gas code. Right. So there are, those of us who are going to advocate it just need to know how to answer those questions that are surely going to come up, you know, with the town council. 
but as far as this group infrastructure, right. So is that, is that uh, Chris, um, to suggest that it's actually broader than natural gas? It could also be yeah. a, a town resolution that says you can't put in oil heating either in your house? It's fossil fuel infrastructure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, infrastructure get, meaning like a furnace in somebody's house? A boiler in somebody's if house? We, if we want to, we don't have to, enforce electrification. The whole goal of this is to try to get buildings electrified as quickly as possible. <clears throat> right, and I doubt that Amherst will want to do that right now. We don't have the capacity, we don't have the education, we don't have, it's just saying that it gives municipalities when they're ready and when the people in them are ready <laughs> to, to be able to do that. We're not there yet. But that is a question that will come up. For sure. Wayne's question. Right, right. So. No, it doesn't say you have to do that. It just says, if you want to, you can. Which, you, <clears throat> which right now you can't because, well, at least as far as the gas code, you can't. As far as the building code is concerned, there's lots of discussions about furnaces and boilers and so forth in the building code. And, um, and, and you would be overriding, overriding some of those things if you don't allow people, for instance, to put in an oil boiler, um, which, something which would otherwise be permitted by the building code. Um, so, you know, it's, it's probably thinking in terms of the future, but it would be very nice to give towns and cities some control over this kind of stuff. Right now, we don't have any control over this kind of stuff. And when we tried, when Brookline tried, they got turned down by the by Maura Healy's office. And could the could towns do something like um, say that oil residential oil burners need to be phased out within ten years? Yes, that would be something. Well, I think there are a few pieces. One piece is that it to not raise costs for people who um, are, um, you know, like an economic justice issue who might not be able to afford it. So that could contradict that. So until prices came way down and there were other options that that might not be able to fly, you know, so that there has to be thoughtfulness about how it's done and when it's done. Yeah, that, that, um sort of brings me to my question, which is, I think it, I think this makes sense. I think it, it would require some, some explanation. So I think we would need to think about how we um, explain this to the city, to the, to the council. Um, I'd like to see us specifically state that, that, while this is giving Amherst the ability to do this, I would, I guess I'd rather, I'd, I'd like to better connect the call for just transition and environmental justice with Amherst. So it, it looks like it, when I read this, it says, you know, we call for um, to pass a law enabling municipalities to prohibit fossil fuel infrastructure and new construction and phase out fossil fuel infrastructure in existing buildings. And then, it call it says Amherst commits to ensuring that it does not impact the primary intent of the building code. That makes sense. And then it sort of says more generally, Amherst can commits to centering the need for just transition and calls on the Massachusetts state legislation to do the same. And then we sort of put it back on the Massachusetts state legislation and Department of Public Utilities to ensure elective electrification and new construction codes don't increase costs, but I feel like Amherst should also take some responsibility for thinking through that before we make any new, before we do anything that was, that we are allowed to do as a result of this resolution. Yeah, Ashwin. <clears throat> Along those lines, I wonder if there's a way that um, if we present this, if we, you know, decide that we want to go forward with presenting this to council and recommending it, that we can talk about it in terms of the climate action plan um, and connect the language of this resolution to our recommendations. Um, because we, I think it would be better if we appeared to 
have the CARP, the plan that Linane is developing with us, be sort of the big framework that all of our that most of our other recommendations flow from, uh, or at least are aligned with. Um, I'm not sure if uh, you all, uh, Felicia and Chris, have seen any of the uh, working documents that we have, um, but yeah. you know, it's some. It's a, we in, in principle, we in ECAC could try to work on thinking about how to do that. Another option, depending on the timeline for this, which I apologize for missing earlier, um, would be if <clears throat> uh, we get language from the climate uh, action plan. Uh, out to you that maybe you could even think about ways that we might connect those dots more. Um, but I do think it would be important to uh, treat this as connected to our broader strategy, which is reflected hopefully in the plan. Um, um, so there two may, I, may I say that there is a, a, a desire to get uh, these various resolutions to look more or less the same in the many communities that are considering one and to get it in that very similar form to the legislator and the governor, um, um, it's sort of at the same time to make the impact the effective. So, so the, our, our group that we're part of is interested in getting this to happen sooner rather than later, um, if possible. I mean, that's, that's, I'm trying to put a little time pressure into it. I would, I would think it would be also desirable to have it look pretty much the same it doesn't mean that it isn't the same in detail, but it would be nice if all of these um, these things that arrived on the desk of the governor and the uh, and on the legislators' desks um, and the DPU's desks would look like. Oh yeah, I've seen lots of those. Boy, we're getting a lot of those things. That's the idea. Yeah, and and to be clear, I'm not, I'm actually not even suggesting modifications to this document necessarily, but rather if we as a committee can be empowered to when we take it or when we recommend its adoption to the council to be able to say, hey, council, this resolution um, is essential for us to be able to meet our climate targets. And it's gonna be a vital part of how we meet the goals that we've set out and implement the priorities that we've established in our climate action plan. So I'm just hoping that we'll figure, be able to figure out how to do that as kind of a messaging thing um, and just a way that we can better understand the consequences of this resolution. Um, and potentially state legislation ourselves. I, I also want to say that, you know, as I'm reading it again, and it's talking about fossil fuel infrastructure. So we're talking about the, the gas pipes coming in. Mm -hmm. That's infrastructure. Well, it's oh, already it's easy for Amherst because we're not having any gas coming in. <laughs> so in terms of propane, it's, it's not really addressing that it's not mm -hmm. preventing us from talking about it but it's not this is not really what's addressed in this um in this um resolution i think i think i agree with that felicia i think that infrastructure could be also a furnace and a duct and duct work and the, the components of fossil fuel burning the boiler that's all infrastructure i i think that it would, pro it would give us the option of not allowing anybody to put in, for instance, an oil-fired boiler, say for it, as, a, as an example. In newer buildings, yeah, okay. I, that, I think that would need to be clarified because I think, I think it, infrastructure is commonly considered pipes oh. underground, owned by utility, et cetera, whereas a boiler is an appliance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Steve. And it might be easier to pass if we do this. We might want to add to it, but this might be an easier way to at least get this resolution through more quickly too. If it was limited to public infrastructure, you're saying like like pipelines? Yeah. Because yeah. I think that Steve. it was oh, the <laughs> um, I think we want to make it clear that this is a resolution requesting that the legislature allow towns and cities to come up with rules and regulations. We are not coming up with those rules and regulations right now. We just want the opportunity to do so in the future. And Andre and I were both involved with um, Chris and Felicia in helping to develop this along with the RMI uh, Institute. So I think somehow we have to make that more clear. So we don't, the town council doesn't get sidetracked by what could be done uh, following this resolution. That all discussions that would happen in the future. We just want that ability to, we're asking for that ability to 
towns and cities to have that uh, opportunity to make res um, make future regulations. We're not yeah, looking I, to be specific uh, now. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Uh, Duane and then Andra. Yeah, um, I was just going to one three things. Maybe one, one is to um, agree with Steve that it's really important to to, to uh, make this clear that we're not asking the town to pat to to, uh, to necessarily take this action, but but this resolution allows them to possibly take that action sometime in the future. The, the one thing I'd be careful with is that if it is, if it is limited to essentially a moratorium on any additional gas infrastructure, um, unless there's some some other language in here that's more general about fossil fuels, but uh, um, which there there may be there may be a tendency to to um, uh, and maybe it's not so important in Amherst because we don't have new gas anyhow, but for people to install oil instead of gas, which is uh, sort of going in the opposite direction. Uh, so I'd be cautious about that. Um, I think the other thing that we'll have to, I think if I was a council person or the town manager sort of considering this, I'd even, even with, with um, uh, even though it's a non-binding um, uh, resolution that just enables the town to do this if, if they, if they want, I think the question of, of um, you know, what is the, um, how do we really help um, uh, defray the costs associated with electrification is going to come up uh, in, in the discussion in terms of, of um, you know, if we take this fa fairly draconian action, critical for, for our needs, but fairly draconian, what, what is, um, uh, you know, what is this pool of money uh, that's going to come and, and have, you know, some, some thinking. And I think we, we as a group have to do that as well as we get into the plan. Uh, but I think that would be a question that we would need to be prepared to speak about at least in some terms um, to address some feedback that I would expect uh, that might come up. And I'm not sure if, if um, Brookline or, or, or others have, have um, addressed that. Although simply by saying I mean, we don't want to, ha we can't solve every problem with us, every future problem. We're just trying to say, this is the direction we want to head in. We want our town to be able to do it. And that is something that we will have to be able to think about in order for this to work. It's not just like we would do it without thinking about that. The, the timing of this is um, important. This is a strategy by uh, 17 municipalities to collectively and, and per perhaps go beyond the um, building electrification accelerator towns um, to, to show that municipalities want choice in, build, in, in building codes. Um, Clearly, that is not the best state policy because it will drive the, the building industries crazy to have different building codes in every town. So what it does is is highlights the need for, you know, it's say it says municipalities want to be able to meet the ambitious electrification goals. So the state really needs to move. Yeah, I, that's, the subtext here is that the BBRS, the Bureau of Building Regulations and Standards, is uh, produced a code which is very anemic as far as the, the uh, as far as climate change is concerned. Um, it's uh, it does it in the stretch code. The, the building code now the stretch code is now about the same as the building code. And the stretch code needs to become a net zero stretch code. That's another subtext that isn't, that isn't involved here. But uh, it would be really the fact that the BBRS has produced an anemic code means that you need the only other solution. Well, the solution would be to refix the building code. But if you don't do that, then you got to give uh, uh, the towns and cities the ability to uh, beef it up. And that's what we're basically asking for. Yeah, Darcy. Uh, yeah, I hate to extend this conversation too long, but um, uh, I think that the the new bill, whether it's not vetoed, you know, whether it's signed by the governor or um, you know it's 
um, overridden by the legislature uh, has a provision that gives um, communities, individual communities, the option, right, to, to create their own codes? No, it has to uh, has go to there. I think we should stay focused on this resolution and see what happens at the state level this week. If yeah, yeah. So it, there, there. It's possible at our next meeting we'll have a completely different conversation because of the passage of the state bill. I think not. Why do I think not? Because the, the, the state bill has a stretch code provision to have a, a, a net zero stretch code. And that's very, very good, um, but it, um, uh, it may or may not pass and it will be staged in. And it's local option. And it's a local option. All, all stretch, all, the stretch code has always been a local option, but most, green, most communities in the, in the Commonwealth have adopted it. But I think that it still is not, one thing it doesn't do, it, uh, I think it doesn't necessarily, it, it allows fossil fuel uh, infrastructure. You can, you, can, you can comply with the building code and have a boiler with, which burns uh, natural gas. And we want all buildings to be electrified. We want to have that not to happen anymore. So I'm not sure, but I don't think that, I believe this, certainly the stretch code now does not prohibit um, uh, burning fossil fuels. <laughs> And I suspect that what it would be done, what will happen to it is it'll make it be a net zero stretch code, which can still have fossil fuels. And then you balance it by having um, TV on the roof. So we don't want fossil fuels at all. So when that's, you, uh, it'll need this even if we have a good stretch code. So, so a question, I recognize the desire to have them all look similarly. Um, so I say this not, I guess I'm nervous that our town council is going to, to be overwhelmed by this when what we really are asking for is two pretty simple things, <laughs> is one pretty simple thing, which is that the, um, the, the second with, be it further resolved, or the first be it further resolved clause seems like to be the main piece that we're asking for. Um, are is any other members of the group that you've been working with concerned that the that it may be overcomplicated um, or is that an Amherst, un, unique to Amherst situation? I, I, I don't know, what do you think, Tricia? Um, I haven't heard. I, I do know that Brookline just passed theirs with like a 270 just three town meeting vote <laughs> um, and um but i don't know um whether it's passed in other places or not yet i, I think that it's probably one of these documents that started out small and then as more people saw it more clauses appeared i don't know that so are you like are you saying if we kept everything in we lost you, Felicia. So I'm gonna I wanna jump in and just mention that we've probably spent as much time on this as we can at this meeting. And you know mm -hmm. I, I think it needs more thought at uh, or yeah. I mean I I I I hear you, Laura, and I think it is complex. Um Ashwin, did you have a comment? Just quickly, um, I, I just want to say that I would like to move forward with recommending this, or at least voting on this as a committee, um, to submit and forward our recommendation or endorsement to the council. And it would just help me um, if we had some language that we could submit to the council, a like our own sort of committee preamble that explains our rationale for this to help break it down for them. I feel like that's something we could do. I still feel like I'm a little unclear on some of the details, so I don't think I'm the person to do it, but maybe Andra or Steve um, could help us come up with something like that. Because if, if we have a good preamble from the committee, I think it'll be easy to recommend this. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think, and I think the cover letter that Felicia and Chris submitted is a good start to that. 
And I think if, if the, the fact is that it's this long because we want to have everybody do the same thing, I think we should say that in our preamble and um, hopefully help deter further discussion about the details of it. Um, so I would, I would support that approach. Um, Steve, I don't know. We got you on the my only, my, my, I guess my first response is that Andra and I were involved in writing this. So we've given it pretty much our best shot. And I suspect, I guess I would suggest it would be perhaps another set of eyes might be the one to be better at doing what you just said. Nominate Sarah. <laughs> That's kind of you. <laughs> yeah, I can probably take, I need to reread the cover letter. I think I didn't read it the, in, was it in this week's packet too? Yes. It, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can chew on that. Okay. If that's, if that's where we're headed. Yeah, that'd be great, Sarah. So why don't we um, plan on that? Um, and if you can get to it before the next meeting, um, we can add it to the agenda and try to get to it. Is it allowable for Sarah to talk with uh, Chris and Felicia in the process? Yeah, I believe yeah, they can, yeah, they they can talk. The right. Meeting. You, Andra, and Sarah can't talk, but she can talk to Felicia and Chris. Okay. That's fine. So, as much as I'd like to help you out, Sarah, it sounds like uh, Andra and I are uh, muzzled uh, okay. by meeting law. Okay, great. Thank you, Chris. And oh, I think Felicia's back in as a. Oh, let me see. Okay, I'm gonna hold on. I'm gonna stop sharing this document first. No, she's gone. Wonder what happened. Okay, well, thank you all. You should be back in now, Felicia. Sorry about that. Ah, there she is. Now you're muted, Felicia. Muted. Unmute yourself. It sounds like we'll do a little bit more work on it and like fix some of those like points and then come back. That sounds good to me. Uh, well, we'll work with Sarah on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Great. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Yes, we'll say goodbye. Okay. Welcome to stay, but. Um, all right. So next up on the agenda is the evaluator follow-up. So um, let me think about the best way to do this. I didn't load it just because it's so large. Maybe if yeah. people can open it on their own. I have um, a ver version that Darcy worked on. Um, and I know Darcy had put some comments in that I think you wanted to discuss as a group. Um, so I can open that version. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't realize you wanted us to work on a different version. Well, everybody, it, it's not a Google Sheet, and, and it would be hard to make this into a Google Sheet. Um, so everybody, yeah, does need to, to do their, their own version, and I will be responsible for compiling all of that when we get to that point. Um, so I was under the impression that today we were supposed to just kind of give it a trial run and report our initial thoughts about the process and the content and that we wouldn't really be discussing the specific rankings yet. Exactly, Steve. Yeah. So, um, Darcy had gone through and tested it out and had some comments that she wanted to share. Um, and she sent me those in writing. Um, but otherwise, I think it's an open discussion for anybody who um, has comments or questions or thoughts that they that they want to share um, at this point. I gave it a test run. <laughs> and, uh, How'd it go? 
and I, I got down the road. I was kind of weaving down the road a little bit, but, um, and I did come up with a couple questions and just, um, just, you know, my brain was trying to keep track of exactly, um, you know, how do I address, how does this particular action relate to these different uh, metrics and so forth? And, and um, um, you know, we evaluating the action itself or the expected outcome of those actions. <laughs> um, so there's like a lot of things, and I, obviously I was in the renewable section and, you know, there's not a whole lot of here in terms actions here in terms of where we're actually going to um, implement renewable energy. And that's where you get your greenhouse gas savings. It's more, you know, it, it was a lot about um, out, uh, outreach and education, um, local ownership, um, which promoting those things are all, meet some of the metrics in terms of equity and so forth. But, you know, it's hard to say, okay, well, um, educating people on um, or like the solar siting analysis. Doing that analysis doesn't save greenhouse gas emissions, um, uh, but it leads to potential siting that will, and it's a critical step. So I wasn't, and there wasn't anything here about build a solar, you know, build renewable energy capacity. Um, so it, which is sort of where at the end of the day, I would, so it's a little hard to figure out, okay, where do I show, do I, tribute greenhouse gas savings to these actions if they're intermediate steps that are critically important to get to that to that endpoint. So that was one sort of dilemma I was um, facing as I went through this. Um, and and it, it, I suspect we should all try to have a consistent approach um, if, if we're gonna aggregate together our pluses and minuses and zeros and and D's. Um, the other, the other more logistical thing I had was, um, so if I had went where um, we went over like where to put notes in, mm -hmm. um, and so um, if I had a particular, you know, I was in one cell, so it was an intersection between an action and a metric, and I had, I wanted, you know, I was thinking, okay, I'm going to give that a plus, but I really got to write a note about what I'm really thinking there. Um, I actually had just ended up putting it in that cell. Um, because then when I went, okay, if I was going to put it in the, um, uh, where I thought we were talking about in the action detail, um, out to the right, um, that wasn't specific about a specific metric. It was more about that action more generally than, than a particular metric, uh, evaluating a particular metric with regard to that action. So I tended to put it just right in the cell, uh, which may not be, um, helpful when everything's aggregated together, but. That was sort of a question too, where to put those sort of notes. Um, but but um, yeah, so that, that was sort of my, I, you know, I, I will say it took me a little bit longer than I was, <laughs> was when I, when I uh, uh, started the effort. It's like, you gotta really think through each of these things. Um, um, but, um, but yeah, that, that was sort of my experience. Yeah, thanks Dwayne. Um, I think that, that's really helpful. I think it's fine if you want to put, if you've already put it in the cell, I would just leave it there. Um, and uh, my my thought, and I'd, I'd love for others to to jump in, is yeah, I, um, I don't think we should give points to an action that's a precursor action if that action is not going to actually reduce emissions. But we need to figure out a way to to show how they they go together. And I think our previous conversation is a great example of that, right? Like we can't support electrification fully without doing this precursor of asking the state to change their out of date rules. That action of asking the state to do that is not gonna reduce any GHG emissions, but it's a precursor to doing something more. And I think there's gonna be a lot of examples. I, I know there's a lot of examples like that in here. I think the more important, or not the more important question, but the, the other question that I raised in my mind when you were talking was, if we don't specifically take it all the way to the end level of renewable energy, then that's an action we need to add. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so 
so that would be those would be my two points don't I wouldn't give point I wouldn't give credit for GHG reductions to an action that's a precursor but we need to make sure that the follow-up action is included in, in some way that uh, yeah, good and that it sort of um, uh, reminds me of, of, of this other point was as I was doing it um, you know it sort of gave me an, an opportunity to say okay is this the right set of actions to show um, and sort of step by step of what are the critical steps. Some, sometimes they were overlapping with each other. And, and to your point, um, Laura, sometimes they didn't really get to the end action uh, of, of um, you know, implementing something uh, that would actually have the um, greenhouse gas reduction of needs. In fact, in the renewables, I mean, even um, setting up a CCA itself <laughs> it doesn't get you there it just once you have all the all the uh, members uh in, engaged with it and and signed up uh and and you procure cleaner energy then then that's the act then that's the act and you retire those certificates <laughs> then then you uh then that gets the greenhouse gas yeah and i would suggest if there's we shouldn't feel um like we can't remove actions or note them as actions that maybe are better suited for another plan or another uh, another group. So if you've gone through and you've noted that there's an action that you just don't feel like fits, then I think that's where in the action details on the right-hand side in the notes, you could add like a, a note about that if it's not summarized in the notes you've, you have in the evaluator. So while we're talking about renewables, um, I found that um, it's it's like uneven the the act the, the actions um, they're not just at different levels of implementation. Um, some are like very specific, and some are very general, um, and they're also kind of repeating very similar things as well, at least under the renewable. Um, and so evaluating each one just may not make sense. Um, I'd have to do it though, to be, you know, a, a trial run to be sure. Um, and just in terms of using it, that it would be uh, for me a much more time efficient and probably cognitively more useful um, thing to do to go across rather than down. So rather than taking an action and going down through all of the permutations of the rubric um, where I have to read the rubric each time because it's different for each, you know, <laughs> criteria um, to go across, you know, say, okay, this rubric, I, you know, kind of internalize it. And now I can go across all of the renewable ones. You are more than welcome to do that. There is yeah, absolutely well, no it's, against it. <laughs> you know, but you, you had done it down. Yeah. The way I did it doesn't mean that's the way you have to, right. have to do it. I think yeah. as long as we, and if you're, if you've gotten once you get started, if if you feel like you know what this action is is not a right fit, you can stop. put in D and all the rest of them and call it a day, right? I wouldn't spend too much much time. Yeah, yeah. But I, I do I like the idea of it. I just I do think that it it raises the question of whether the actions are comparable in in a way that it's useful to do this comparative evaluation. Yeah, I think that's a good point. And I think that, I mean, the, the idea of, of this is to, is to use this as a tool to improve, right? So if there's, you know, I think it's in our hands now to say this action is, is too um, high level. We, we may, but we need something like this action. How do we change the action to be at the level that it needs to be at? Yeah, Steve. Uh, 
Unmute. There we go. I lost my mouse. Um, yeah, I found in the land use category very few things that I would consider actions. I saw things that I would consider goals. And so these are things, you know, more open space, um, better food supply. Those things were goals, perhaps strategies, but not actions. I, I see actions as a series of steps that you can take. So I had trouble with many of them of evaluating them um, because they were goals. And yeah, sure, yeah, the goal, if, if implemented, could lead to a particular uh, trait or a positive ranking for a particular evaluation. But it was kind of speculative because there were a lot of ifs leading from a goal to what the expected actual actions might be. So I think, one, we might want to be more careful about distinguishing distinguishing between strategies, goals, and actions. Um, and I think we need to move more towards the specific actions and um, from those goals and have a small set of actions with specific plans in our climate action plan and not just a long, long list of goals with no steps toward achieving them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Ashwin. I echo what Steve said. I felt I felt very similarly about trying to do this for the land use recommendations, <clears throat> um, and it was to the point where I was I was wor I was basically getting a little worried that I was because there's some of these things that I feel like I could you know kind of throw this framework out and articulate a positive case for why and how even we want to do these things, and I just was worried that some of that qualitative narrative might get lost in the framework. And I hope, I hope that doesn't happen. Um, and it, ju it, it just ended up being kind of speculative, like Steve said. And I mean, I wonder if as we do this, and like, I guess we'll talk about this to some extent in our task groups, but do we have license to make some assumptions and, and even recommend like, hey, we think that for example, uh, <laughs> you know, pandemic, like right now we have pandemic relief and community participation highlighted in land use change that these are good. And in order to be part of our climate strategy, they need to have these elements and be implemented in this way. And if that, if that happens, then they will check these criteria, then they will meet these criteria. Like in, in a way that's almost like reverse engineering or, or kind of doing this whole exercise backwards. Um, but that's kind of the way that makes more sense to me for how to do this. Um, but I, I don't want to contravene the spirit of what we're supposed to do and what everyone else is doing. I, my take is that whatever, when I, when I went through it, I, I had a very similar thoughts. And I found that as I was going through the evaluator and looking at each of the um, metrics, there were some metrics that were a definite no, this doesn't do anything this action, you know, in quotes, doesn't do anything. There were some where I was like, this action could do that if it was reworded and re... And so I put next to the action details, you know, it needs to, to, to be able to get a check in this box or a plus in this box, it has to include this language and it has to include, has to be rewritten. So I, I think the end goal of all of this is that we have a list of actual actions that we feel good about, that we feel meet the goal of not only, a, a, that meet the goal of all of these things that we have together said are important. Obviously GHG reductions, equality, resiliency. Um, and so any way that the, any way that individuals in this group feel like they can get to that. So it's either taking this, this action and reworking it first and then going through the evaluator or the way I did it, it's going through, you know, I think any way that we can get to that end goal of, you know, throw, I'd like to see us get to a list of really actionable actions that all come together to meet a strategy um, that show sort of the steps for when the actions maybe don't reduce emissions on their own, but they have to be done to lead to that. Um, and I'd like 
us to be able to um, explain that, like as we go through it, like each of us to feel ownership over being able to explain how they got to their actions of their group through through that kind of that process. Cool, that's helpful. And yeah, maybe what I'm saying is really obvious to other people, but it kind of helps me just to say it out loud to get my head around it. I think that maybe another way to look at this is rather, because, because nothing has actually been done yet and because we only have a, a skeleton of what these things might look like, more than being asked, does this action meet these criteria? We're being asked, how might this goal be met in such a way that meets these criteria? And having thought about that, do you think that's actually very feasible or not? Right, and so for some things, the answer will be, yeah, we can easily think of a way that we can meet this goal and uh, you know, in accordance with the criteria that we've established, or at least some of them, but there's others where having thought about it, actually, no, it's gonna be really hard to do this in a way that empowers people, reduces emissions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I don't know, I think if that, if, does that sound, I'm just trying to make sure I'm thinking about this correctly, but. Yeah, Darcy. Yeah, I would just say that, you know, we had said, uh, we had had a little discussion earlier about how, uh, you know, uh, some of the actions that we talked about in our task groups are, you know, would be incredibly good to somehow implement, but they might not fall exactly under us. Um, and that we might be able to figure out, like, a way to refer them so that some appropriate committee um, would receive them in as full a way as we looked at them so that they, and then we could advocate for them in, in that area, you know, like it might go to the CRC so that they could try to incorporate it into the master plan um, or something. So that if it isn't something that doesn't, you know, there, there may be some of the things in there that, you know, don't neither fall under, you know, like reducing greenhouse gas emissions, or they might not fall under climate resilience. Um, so, but, but it, that doesn't mean that we throw them out. That means that we, you know, we nurture them and put them somewhere where they can be taken care of in the appropriate place. Yeah, and so I think what what I would suggest is that, and part of the reason why I want us to focus in on our task groups is that I think if if Stephen Ashwin want to go through and change some of the descriptions of these action, change the actions they can do that in the spreadsheet that they're working on and I can compile them all together. Um, just, it just needs to be noted that like, we changed the wording of this um, so that we know that we can um, make sure we're not losing any of the richness of this exercise by trying to compile it together and, and, and hand it back to Linnaean. So uh, the notes, you know, when you hover over the action and you see the, the note that gives more detail, um, you can add another note or a comment and say, you know, here's what I wish it said. And I'm answering, <laughs> evaluating based on that. Um, I would put that. Um, we edit that note. I couldn't. That's a good question. I would actually just put it in the action details tab. It may automatically up. It may be worked set up to automatically update that note. You know, one thing when I went through this was um, just trying to grapple with um, the meaning of the rubric itself. And um, like, I think that in November, part of our timeline was that we were going through a process of 
trying to prioritize our actions. Um, and we ended up coming up with this list of actions. Um, and the climate action plans that I've seen do include, you know, a list of the co-benefits. So, you know, I had a little bit of confusion about like, what, how are we going to use this rubric? Are we using it right now to edit and prioritize, or are we planning on putting this rubric into the plan so that the public can see, okay, so these are the co-benefits of these actions. Um, so I'm assuming that our plan will state the co-benefits, um, or is there some prioritizing that's going on now? Um, and if so, how is how does it work? You know, like, are we attributing points to these things or, yeah. So anyway, I'm a little confused by it. <laughs> yeah, so I'll give my take and if others have other ideas, please jump in. I don't think we should be worrying about prioritizing right now. Um, I don't think that, I think what this metric is really helping us do and based on the conversations we've heard, I think it's doing that is figuring out if these are even the right actions and if they're written correctly and if they're leading to the end goal that we want to achieve. Um, the benefit of applying the metrics is that we're forcing ourselves to have this, these multiple lenses that we know we, we wanted to have, but that are easy to forget when we don't actually try to do it, right? Um, so I would say, let's table that for now. I think uh, what we first need to do is clean up this list and make it a, a list of, ac of real actions that we feel either lead our stepping stones to, a, to meeting a goal, um, that we feel are stepping stones to meeting a goal. And then once we've done that, once we've narrowed that down, I think that at that point we can decide, okay, what are the things we're doing first? And what are the things, and maybe we, we need to do some sort of ranking to figure that out, or maybe we don't, maybe it just comes to us after doing this exercise, right? So that would be my, my take. Yeah, Jesse. I, I just reiterate something I think either Laura or Ashwin said, I'm not sure, was this part of this exercise is allowing us to really take ownership of each of these. And like, and what I'm hearing is, and I apologize because I've missed a lot, like we do whatever we take to the, we, are, we do whatever we need to do to make, to feel like we're behind these actions, that we believe in them, we love them, we think they're gonna work, we think they're gonna achieve our very clear goals. We just, we do that. And I think that would be a very powerful exercise. And I do think, Dar yeah, Dar I'll go back to you. I, I do think though that we would definitely wanna put in the report that these have co-benefits. I mean, I, I think that that has always been the, go the goal uh, of, of doing this analysis. And so we may find that we want to use this, in some version of this in some way in the report. I, I just don't think we have that answer yet. Yeah, I, um, you know, I, I was sort of struggling with, um, you know, trying to figure out um, whether certain actions should be combined with each other because they were related to each other. And because it seemed like that combining them is the way to get more greenhouse gas reduction. Uh, but on the other hand, they did seem to be separate actions. You know, for example, um, you know, transitioning the municipal fleet to electric and um, also having a campaign to, to encourage car owners to buy electric, which is some, is, is an action that actually isn't in there, but I was suggesting be added. So those are two related things. Um, and in waste, it was sort of like, you know, reducing residential food waste, reducing commercial food waste. Well, 
you know, just reducing food waste. You know, so, you know, I, I think that they are separate, um, but then the, the, the resulting greenhouse gas reductions look like they're less, you know? So anyway, I, I you know, that, That is something that we should look at at least. You know, should we combine them? Should we not? You know, does it make sense to do them separately because they're they are separate campaigns? Um, yeah, I think to um, Steve's earlier point, like both of those sound like goals, and then if the actions under those goals are different, like if the campaigns that we need to take to to address commercial food waste versus residential food waste need to be, if those actions need to be different, then it probably does make sense that they're separate, but they're all gonna roll up to the, to that strategy around food waste in a way. So I, I guess I wouldn't overthink it at this point, unless you think that you wanna combine things or separate out things because it's easier to, to um, because it, it makes more sense as an action or a goal um, would be my suggestion there. Um, Sarah, did you have a comment? I did, but <laughs> um, oh, so having equity sitting along the left side, I think has been throwing me a bit. And I think it's maybe perhaps a bigger conversation of how far do we want to go to make sure that these are all a plus when it comes to equity, because a lot of these things, I don't wanna say are out of our control, but a lot of these things are tied to the systems and town governance in Amherst. Um, so this all, like equity to me almost feels like we get all the, uh, the actions and strategies outlined, and then we add equity on each individual one and kind of see like, how do we elevate that? Right now it feels like a lot of these are a minus and I don't like it being so black and white. To Ashwin's point, I feel like it's more, how creative can we be, right? To get it to a plus for some of these. Um, so I keep putting zeros, <laughs> which is the middle one because I, I, can't, I can't foresee a path forward for some of these, but I don't want to to say that and then leave it. Um, I want to see all of them have a plus and maybe that's just na my naivete, but. Um, yeah. Which group yeah. are you in, Sarah? Buildings. Buildings. Um, yeah. yeah, Sarah, that's a really good good point. I think that the way I, I, I approached it was, um, I guess my take is that if any of these have a negative, we should talk about it because I don't think we want any of them to have a negative. I don't think it's, uh, I also don't think we should assume that they're all gonna be plus because that also seems unrealistic. But I think that um, there's gonna be things, but, I, but some of this is not action specific. And that was my one comment about the procedural equality piece is that to me, that feels like a town-wide thing. Like how yeah. as a town are we changing how we include stakeholders in decision-making? Yeah. And how does that trickle down into all of our committees, not just ECAC versus, um, and so and solving that action by action is not an effective way to do that. That needs to be a yeah. higher level thing. And, and so we may decide after going through that, that procedural equality is something we wanna talk about in the report as like a high level thing but that we're not gonna build into each action step. Whereas some of the other pieces, we may be, in some cases, um, we may be able to tweak the language on how we talk about an action or tweak how we plan to address the action that would move something from a zero to a plus or move something from a negative to a zero. Yeah, Ashwin. Um. I don't know if this is like the right moment to get into the weeds of trying to do like an intercoder reliability type of check, but it, it just, it's just funny. Maybe I'm like way more optimistic or something, but when I, when I looked at the uh, recommend the um, actions under buildings, all I saw were pluses and potential pluses, <laughs> you know, for, for equity in particular, like I, I saw potential for 
huge equity benefits across all of those just at a glance. Yeah, you know, doing I think exercise. So I just wonder if you and I are like, am I thinking about this totally differently from you or, or I wonder what's going on. I wonder why we're seeing Yeah, it. I think I'm just looking at it through the lens of um, how I know things are now and obstacles that need to be overcome and over to kind of shift people's thinking into this. I, I think I'm looking at it, assuming that people are going to hedge um, and that it, like, sure, we could, like if we're talking about affordable housing, it depends on how we do it, right? Like it depends on how things are done and who's brought to the table. And I guess this like one, two, three system feels to me like there's all these layers in between and I'm uncomfortable just marking it as one. Um, that makes sense, yeah. Okay, I think I think I, I think I'm I on think the same on, that. Yeah, yeah, we. I think we are. I think I'm being more pessimistic about how aspirational others will want to be alongside of us. <laughs> yeah, and I think. Uh, go ahead, Andra. I think that speaks to um, the need to probably put comments in, like Dwayne was doing, whatever way makes sense to you, right? In the cell, if that's what makes sense, um, because we're going to get. Um, a lot of rich insight about the how, if we do that while we're thinking it through, um, that might kind of, we might be able to pull out for as examples, you know, not obviously we're not gonna have that much detail in the whole thing, but um, for me, I'd, I'd, I'd almost like to see you know, your thoughts, Sarah, when you're, you know, putting in uh, a zero, but it, it's really, you know, you're thinking all these things about what could be in, in, I personally think it would be easier to see it in the cells themselves, but I'm, I'm willing to go to another tab. Yeah, I am putting notes the way Laura did on the the other other comments so all of them might have an asterisk sorry i'm going to be the pain that, that has a lot to say but a lot of mine have comments and yeah i'll just reiterate that i don't think there's any perfect way to do it i think the reason why i suggested doing it on a different worksheet is so that we could look we to darcy's point look at the evaluator in more of a comparative way um, and that's harder to do when there's lots of notes in the cells. But if that's the way that it makes it easiest for you to process this work, like, please do it that way. Just don't put it in other people's cells <laughs> because when I copy and paste it, it's gonna get messed up. That's like my biggest, if you wanna add a comment to another task groups section, please do that in the action detail page. Laura, are you copying, pasting, or am I? I thought I was putting these together. Um, I think that I'm going to have to do it, but we can talk about it. OK. Yeah. But but I think to, to Sarah and Ashwin, to your both of your points, and Sarah, that was a really good point. Like, you can add that to the other comment tab if there's like some higher level things that we really want to make sure that we're pulling out of it, as I as, as, you're, as you're going through it you're thinking man we really need a section in the um whole thing on this like let's make sure we capture that somewhere so that we can have have that discussion amongst ourselves and then together with um Linnean. Yeah, Darcy. So, so is our goal to have um, the different um, task group leaders put all their comments in before the next meeting so that we can actually have a document where we have everybody's comments so that Laura is going to have the horrible task of copying and pasting all <laughs> all of our comments into a master document that we can share at the next meeting or before hopefully before a little few days before yeah so that's the goal and it may be a combo of me and stephanie we'll see how we how we figure it out um i think what i had put in 
what I have in the ECAC info tab is a goal to um, get every to have everybody get their versions of the spreadsheets to me by by the twentieth, which is next week, um, so that I can have a few days to uh, pull it together to get it to you, ideally by the twenty second, but at the latest by the twenty fifth. It'd be helpful if they came from a task group, but if you all are splitting it up, then that's fine too, just as long as it's clear who's doing what, what pieces. And I found when I went through it that after I went through the first one or two, like, in real detail, then I had it in my brain how it was working and I was able to go a little bit more quickly through the others. So <clears throat> just flagging that as, um, and, and you don't need to, I think again, I think Jesse restated what I tried to say much more eligently as usual. Like it's all about, we need to, we need to really be able to understand what these actions are, that they're actually actions that are going towards our goal, the goals that they, all of these, co-benefits and lenses have been applied. Um, and so I think however, whichever way you use this document to get to that place, I think is the right way to use it. I just want to say to Laura that when you talked about this last time, and I think the idea was that even if you're doing the work individually and splitting it up, you as task group co-chairs need to have consensus on what you're putting forth. So it's not just your own individual perspectives. I mean, you might put that in, but then you have to have that conversation with the other task uh, group co-chair prior to your final submission on the 20th or the 22nd, whenever. Yeah. Yeah. And if you haven't been able to have that conversation, then maybe just note it, like to be determined, you know, to be discussed. I'm assuming that folks that are unsure and want to talk to their task group are probably going to note it as an NB, ND or something. But yeah, that's that's a really good point, Stephanie. Uh, Darcy. Yeah, there, there are some categories that aren't covered by our task group. So we have to figure out how to do that. Um, one of the things that I, I had suggested was that the, the green infrastructure pieces, if somehow or other they could be done by Linnaean, that would be nice. Um, and, um, you know, for the, for the items, there's a section for us to suggest additions or I guess deletions. Um, and so that is an issue because we wanna figure out the code, you know, like if we were adding something like creating new <laughs> renewables um, that would be a, that would be an action that we would need to you know come up with these co-benefits for um, or if we decided to to reorganize it in some way so anyway I guess after the next meeting we can discuss if somebody has a really strong desire to add something or reorganize we could discuss it at the next meeting don't you think we should be just adding them if they're, it's your task group's area and it's missing? I think we should just, you know, on another sheet or, you know, somehow we should do the evaluation for installing renewables. And yeah, yeah. we could do it a couple ways. You could just add, I think that if you've gone through the evaluator and that's cause you to recognize that there needs to be more actions, you sort of kind of evaluated them already. So I, you can put them in the action. So on the end, on the bottom of the action details worksheet, there's a, a space for additional actions. So you could just add them there and then we can decide at the next meeting whether we wanna redo the, the evaluator to be updated with all the, the actions that we've edited or added 
and whether we want to go through it again or whether or, or not. But I would I would caution us not to add columns to the evaluator spreadsheet just because that creates more possibility that I don't copy and paste it correctly. But, yeah. I mean, it does seem like um, this is probably our last, before we go deeper and deeper and deeper, this is our, this is the time when we should, um, to the extent that, you know, we as task force co-chairs or whatever didn't quite and we're now recognizing that we didn't quite get the list of tasks right. Um, you know, at, at, there, some are, both in terms of the language as well as you know the the the, um, the set that we put forward it being sort of comprehensive and of similar um, level of of uh, scale. And it, it would seem like um, I don't know. I'm I, I'm sort of like when I was doing this, I was like. I wish I could just like rename the tasks. Uh, maybe it's because you know we didn't we did this like months and months ago. But it's like okay now that we're really getting into these actions and evaluating that's based on all these this rubrics. Um, I sort of be inclined to spend a little bit of time, um, you know, recasting with Andre in my case. Um, you know the set of actions to. Um, to, to better reflect, um, I think, what we want to evaluate. Um, if, that, if this is, you know, sort of, I, I think really our best chance to do it now, better now than later, uh, in terms of getting it into the report in the fashion that we really want the public to see. Um, and, I, I, and I didn't look at the other ones, but, you know, I was looking at the other ones just as we were speaking. And yeah, they're, they're all, so, so much of them are, are like goals instead of action. I mean, Ashwin mentioned affordable housing. It's like, yeah, I mean, that we definitely want affordable housing, but the action is how do we get, you know, the action, what's the action to get to, you know, net zero affordable housing or, or something along those lines. Um, and, and then, and then, um, and then you get into, you know, it's not all positive. It's going to cost down the bottom where it's like budget items. Uh, you know, there's going to be some budget implications. Um, uh, that, that wouldn't wouldn't uh, might not otherwise show up, uh, and I, I, I sort of doing that with with the renewable ones as well. So I mean, would you give us sort of the um, openness to um, maybe as a task force group, me and Andre in my case, um, to provide a um, uh, perhaps a, a, a recommended version 2.0 of our of our uh, of our um, set of um, activities. Not wildly different, but cast, no, cast a bit differently. Yeah. Yeah, Dwayne, I mean I think that's exactly what you need to be doing. So this is the this is the moment, right? We need to be re redefining these actions to be actual actions. If you want to add new actions, um let me rephrase what I said before. I would suggest add them at the bottom or if you want to if you want to copy the evaluator, make it a new tab and write renewable, yeah. then I it'll be easier for me yeah, to- I, I, I realize the spreadsheet logistics that you don't want different columns showing up different in different spreadsheets. Yeah, so just kind of recopy the evaluator tab and if you want to add them in and evaluate them that way. I think if you change the language on the action details of the actions, that it'll change automatically on the evaluator. But if you want to add completely new actions, I think that's where. Yeah, screw up. Yeah. Okay. I tested it and it didn't work, but it, there yeah, I don't think it does that. Some re redo that you have to, you know, update it. Yeah. And I don't know how Lauren did that, to be honest with you. So I would, I don't know. I did, I did learn if you click on them, then you get the, uh, the details. I didn't see that before. When I, I didn't was... know that before either. <laughs> Um, okay, I think this has been a really helpful discussion. Um, do folks feel like they can go forward in a way that is going to get us to a good spot for next next meeting? See some nodding. Okay. So um, this is a heavy. Duty. You know, we're ending. Just give me a minute. This is a heavy homework. Two weeks. Yeah. So we can, ex we don't have to get it done in two weeks. So do folks want to have more time? 
but then we're putting it off even more as zoning decisions are made and budget decisions are made. Yeah, I think everybody was nodding. I saw everybody nodding. <laughs> that what, it was too hard to do in two weeks? No, that they could do it within before the next meeting. That it is hard and that we will do it probably. <laughs> If, if we give ourselves two more weeks, I'll just start it in two weeks. Exactly. Yeah. That's a... yeah. So, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. So I think we're, we're in a time crunch because I think we want Linnean to be able to get the report done when we've asked them to get the report done and which for which the grant has, I think we have to get everything done by May, Stephanie, correct? Yeah. I mean, well, actually, Technically, you had changed it to April, but at the very latest, May. Yeah. So I would suggest that we try to try to do this by, by next Wednesday. Um, and we can, I don't think that we would necessarily want to present it to Linnean at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Um, Linnean will be at our next meeting to um, give an update on their end. Um, but we certainly want to talk about it at our next meeting and figure out how to, and we can exp we can talk with Linnean about what we've been doing with it and how we've been working to make the actions more actionable and all of these things. Um, I think that's a discussion we'll, we, we would have. Um, but I think we would probably still need to have more discussion as a as a group around it um and decide those next steps that darcy was raising yeah steve i guess I, i'm thinking that a good goal would be for each task group to identify one two or three strategies that really can be evolved into a series of actions and and that i think would be great for <laughs> The climate action report just a couple of things that we really prioritize and really work out in detail so that they can actually happen and then be a lot of other ideas that we can work on in the coming months and years but for now we have a handful of concrete things with very specific actions very specific steps timelines who's going to be responsible what are the what are the barriers that we foresee um, things like that that'll really allow us to move them forward. So that would be my idea of a success for this process would be a small number of things that could be fully developed into detailed actions. Yeah, so I think that's a great suggestion. Um, and I think that'll take a little more time, but I think if we can come next, if we can use this process to start to narrow down those one to three actions, then we can start to to continue to, with the help of Linnean and, and figuring out how we wanna put it in the report, um, really get more detail. Okay, any other last comments about this? All right, I don't, I don't see any. Um, okay, so we've got a lot of homework to do but that's okay. Um, do, in terms of the next meeting agenda, we've sort of been talking about it as we've, as we've gone. Linnean is gonna come and give us an update on how they're doing on the report more generally. Um, they know we're work, of course they know we're working on this. Um, and so we can give them an update on what we've been doing. Um, from the timeline perspective, um, I did include just a rough timeline in the packet. Um, they're coming to us next week, next time on the 27th. We have one more meeting on the 10th and then we're meant to get the first draft of, of it by the 19th. So we probably want to get back with to Linnean with um, the finalized list of actions pretty pretty soon um, in early early February if possible. 
Um, we have a lot more things to discuss, I think, as a group related to how we're going to um, review the plan, how we're going to present the plan to the community, what do we actually want from the community in terms of input on the plan. Um, so I think all of that will have to come at a future meeting, but I just want to flag that for folks um, that I've started to think about the things we need to think about, but that's about, that's about, that's about as far as I've gotten. Um, so in terms of next meeting, we'll have the Linnaean update. Um, we have these other kind of things that we will need to resolve uh, or talk about and we'll figure out how to fit those in either at this meeting or the following meeting, but that's the electrification, um, the biomass and the CPC. Anything else? Yeah, Darcy. Do you think it makes sense for us, I, you know, the finance committee of the town council, when it comes to crunch time, they, they meet every week. And I'm wondering if there's a period of time where, where we, we might want to do that as we get into our crunch time, um, you know, whether, you know, just think about planning, is there a month or two months where we want to meet every week? Um, just because there's just that much to do, you know, like there's, I think that we just need to think about that. Yeah, definitely. Um, we will, we certainly will need to think about how to, um, how to get all this done. Yeah. If meeting all together is the right way or something, but yeah. Right, yeah. It could be, you know, every other week with our task group or something like that. So just to be clear, if I was to um, email Andra to set up a time when we can um, discuss and resolve what set of actions we want, are we able to? Are we able to do that with public meeting law? You can do that. You can do that because you're just reviewing and prioritizing actions. You're not making any. You're not coming up with anything new, or you're just sort of you're just tweaking a list that you've already created, basically. Okay. And clarifying things. Okay. Um, okay, does anybody else have anything to raise for this meeting? Otherwise, I think we can call it. Just a minor logistical yeah. thing, I think. Um, at least I was trying to find these coming up meetings on my calendar. And I think Stephanie's um, recurring uh, meetings have expired this last one. We changed, I think we changed, I can double check. I mean, it came up for me and so I'm, I mean, I've got it, it shows up as recurring, but I'll double check uh, Dwayne, so. Okay, I have this one as my last one that actually showed up on the calendar from you. Okay, I'll double check. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is for your next meeting, you know, Linnaean, is coming to do their presentation, but they certainly don't have to stay for the whole meeting, obviously. So you could limit the time so that you have more time to continue with this effort. It might be good just to get some time and clarification with them, front loan them at the beginning of the meeting and then have more time to follow up after. That's a good point, Stephanie. It'd be helpful maybe if you could ask them to, of course, submit anything for the packet in advance, but also if they could tell us how much time they think they need based on what they, the updates they have. I think that would help us plan for the agenda, but. They're coming because they were asked to. So yeah, I think they're just giving an update. update. So if you can ask them how long, how yeah, much no, well, update they That's what have. I mean. It's just to give you an update of where they are. So yeah, I don't, I think they can, you know, you can also tell them we're gonna give you a half hour in our meeting. You can do it that way too. Well, if you could just ask them. Yep. That would be great. Um, and we can talk about that more offline. Yep. Okay, any other questions or thoughts? Okay, great. Well, I look forward to getting your evaluators next week. 
Um, and we will talk again soon. I want to ask for any public comment at the last? Oh, there is no public left. So I think we're good. good. <laughs> Thank you, Sifa. Um, all right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a good um, night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.